BBC Radio 1. So you like playing video games? I mean, come on, who doesn't? But have you ever thought about working in them? From creating them, to writing about them, to streaming them? There's a whole host of different opportunities. The UK has a long-standing history of creating world-class video games, and with the global games audience at around 2.5 billion, there really are opportunities whatever your vocation. We're going to take a look at a few today. Whatever you're into, there probably is a job uh, in the games industry for you. I work at Indigo Pal, which is a video games and tech PR agency. I'm deputy editor on Edge magazine. I am a composer first with a little bit of sound design on the side. Assassin's Creed's not a small no. franchise. It's massive. <laughs> <laughs> I am a game director. I am the chief exec of UK Interactive Entertainment, the trade body representing UK games companies. I've been gaming since I was six years old and Throughout that time, I've experienced lots of different, like, sexism, you know, and racism throughout gaming. Four years ago, I decided to create a community so that I could kind of game away from that kind of negativity. I love promoting the industry and the advocacy work that we do as a body is incredibly important. We want to make the UK the best place in the world to make, play and sell games. We basically, every month, make the world's best game magazine. I mean, not that you're biased myself. or anything, <laughs> no, of course. I'm not biased, you know. It's my job to kind of be the vision holder for the game. Everything from pitching the concept to getting it signed, guiding its changes along the way, and then trying to get everyone excited about it. It's simultaneously less and more glamorous than it sounds. Um, <laughs> it's like 80% admin and 20% events, but it's obviously all around inspiring cool products, um, so a lot of it's really fun. Happy uh, which is my one, the bigger one. Got that recording now. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> you want to take a look at me, right? Yes, yes, totally. Cool. Like nice. Ignore. So how did you get into it? How does one do what you do? It was a pure accident, but it was an amazing, amazing accident. Um, I applied for an internship in Gopal. They hired me after a month, and then that was that, basically. I started working off on these like really small tasks, like building media lists, um, helping out with like events and things like that. And now I'm an account manager, and I run my own accounts with the help of my team, obviously. I think like a lot of people, I sort of stumbled into games as a, as a career choice. When I was I was about 14, I started playing music and I was terrible. Um, and I couldn't learn anyone else's music, so I thought I'll try writing my own. And that was kind of, and I was like, oh, this is actually more fun than other people's stuff. It was awful. When I was at university and I was sort of reading Kotaku, an official PlayStation magazine, and I was like, oh, I can do writing and I like video games. Like, I could combine that, and that's a job that people do. I'm, I'm seeing people do it all the time, so I'll do that. I first of all worked on Newsround. Uh, and we were the first online team uh, in 2000, and that was pretty innovative at the time. In order to get young people to read news, we always did something interactive to hook them in. My first job in games was working in customer support on the telephones, where I'd be answering calls about, you know, The Sims and, and black and white and things like that. I fell into it by accident. Um, my teacher tricked me into thinking that it was an <laughs> academic subject. And so I told my parents it's an academic subject, drama. I auditioned for Rada and Lambda, because again, I didn't know of any other ones. Some people don't even do drama school. I've got loads of friends who started younger and they've got an agent through writing or doing their own stuff. And they've just gone into the industry that way. There's so many different ways of going through it. I just remember being quite young and not really knowing much about acting. All I knew was that I wanted to do it. What was your degree in? Uh, English literature, <laughs> which you would think would be useless, but <laughs> actually. Is it useful? <laughs> it is pretty useful, yeah, I would say so. Like, it taught me a lot of really, really um, important critical thinking skills. But, I mean, you certainly don't need a degree to do what uh, I and loads of other people have done, like, in the games industry. I went to university and studied music, and then I went to another university and studied more music. So much music! It never ends! <laughs> started on Facebook and invited a couple of friends that were interested in the same thing, had experienced the same thing. From then, it's just grown into doing events, doing panels, wherever we can really, and the community's grown to have like 4,000 black women around the world um, in this one group. So, it is commonly a very weird route. I went to a lot of meet and greets. I um, I tried to know as many people as possible. I worked a very boring job for a few years to save up money so I could buy a studio. There was an initial buy-in that was kind of tough. I, you know, I basically had to sort of 
grind away for a few years to buy some, a lot of nice toys. I saved enough to the point where I thought, I, I could live without, you know, solid income for a while. And uh, then I did that. I just I quit and... Um, it's a big leap though. A lot of people would stay in boring jobs and not do that. It's terrifying. Would you say getting the Assassin's Creed job was like one of your top three moments? Absolutely. Not only did I know the universe so well that I could really dive into it, but um, it was the first job where I felt that a massive company like Ubisoft had trusted me to lead a project and be the face of a project. Even though there was a massive responsibility to that, I had a lot of fun because I felt like this is a dream, right? What's some of the biggest misconceptions you think people have about your job? That you're just fluff, essentially. That you're not really there to do much. All the job really in PR is um, behind the scenes. It's a lot of like organizational um, activities. They just think you sit and play video games all day, which you certainly do not. Um, especially not when you're sort of at the editor end of things as well. Like we're a very small team, so I have to do a lot of writing as well as a lot of editing of other people's work. Probably that it's very glamorous and it's very um, exciting and because um, people think, oh, music, sound. I mean, I, I heard some of that today and, it was, and, I, I, and I, had, I had a great time. Playing guitar by a fireplace, oh, that sounds yeah. great. Let me write that down. And truthfully, there's a lot of sort of emailing millions of people. I mean, it's, it's all, it's kind of an office job. I know a lot of people now who take on to QA as, uh, as a career. There's something they want to do long term because it's not just sitting playing games all day, it's, you know, playing the same bit back over, and and over, yeah, and over again. It's a really critical, analytical job where you're trying to find every single thing to make the game better. People think it's like completely novel being black, female and a gamer and people just assume we don't do it, which is not true. Um, we get called unicorns and stuff and so this group has really shown, I know, but the group's shown that, you know, that's not true. It isn't as clear cut as reading lines and mm. just doing it. Yeah. You've got to show the emotion behind it and you've also got to tell a story and make it sound interesting. What's the most glamorous thing you get to do. The most glamorous thing I've ever done was probably be Andy Circus's PA for like two days, a temporary PA. I've got his mobile number. <laughs> Getting to go to any of the trade shows is always really exciting. So like my first E3 was really exciting. <laughs> you know, like being in a big sort of Sony conference hall, seeing, seeing all the big lights happen when before you just watch it on streams or something. Yeah, you get to travel a lot being an actor. I mean, with Assassin's Creed, I traveled to Montreal and I saw Montreal, and Montreal's a beautiful city. The thing is though, a lot of the time when it comes to traveling with the job, you don't really get to see much of the place. A lot of the time, you, when they travel you out there, you're working, and then when you're not working, they send you back home. Who have you worked for so far? Names that obviously when I was a kid, I used to only hear about and then not really think about working for them, but like Blizzard is amazing. They're really, really great, obviously, classic, classic brand. Um, I'm working on Pokemon Go, absolute dream of mine. Harry Potter Wizards Unite, which is fabulous since I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd. Um, yeah, it's incredible. What would you say is the best thing and the worst thing about your job? It can be really, really stressful, especially when you're working on a magazine, a monthly deadline, where it's just all or nothing, sprint to the finish line. We had a press day when we were working with Alien Isolation, and before that day, none of us knew if the game was good or not. And then a bunch of external How can you papers. Not know? Because you're this close to it, and you see oh, it every day, and all yeah. you're seeing is the faults and all the things that go wrong with it. But the best thing is, especially being on edge, it's just so great to be able to work with people I've looked up to my whole life and create something beautiful out of um, that opportunity you get. I feel so lucky to do that. I was working on a series called uh, Family Game Night and uh, I got a whole bunch of emails and letters from parents saying that they were able to play video games with their kids for the first time. I was just like, like that's Aww. why we're here, you know, we're yeah. doing that. And there was, after Alien Isolation came out, again, we had a whole bunch of people writing articles and emails and everything about how it helped them cope with anxiety. It's a side effect you never even expect about these things. And just the fact you can send these things out there and they can inspire and completely change people's lives. It's like, yeah, that's why I'm in this, that's why I'm doing it. When you're finishing off a piece of music, there's a real satisfaction to just hearing. I mean, sometimes I feel like I get a bit downbeat. I just, I, I like to sort of manage expectations, but mm. really, when, when it locks in, it really is the greatest feeling. Working in games is this real balance of incredible passion and when everything's going right, you take it home with you and it's brilliant and you're living your best life and then everything goes wrong one day or things aren't going quite right. And again, because it's a passion, you take it home with you and your weekend's ruined. It's a real welcoming, inclusive community and people just want other people to succeed. The representation of black women within games is quite low, so people have a lot of gratitude towards me um, because of the space. Um, they've been looking for it and they never had anywhere to feel like they could feel 
they were a gamer or call themselves a gamer. Everyone in gaming has been so supportive from day one. They've made it incredibly easy for me. I've been really lucky as well. As a girl, I've not really encountered much resistance um, and I would say it's been a really really lucky and lovely climb to where I am now. There's initiatives like Black Girls Code that we're kind of supporting now via streams and stuff. There's so much opportunity out there like I think in 2020 just in the US alone 1.4 million computing jobs will be available. Wow. So it's about bringing people to those opportunities and bring it in schools as well. It's about the next generation making sure they feel they can go into these industries. We always want to be reaching more people um, and bringing delight and joy to more players, you know, in the world. And for that to happen, we absolutely need to diversify um, the kinds of games that we make. And I think the last 10 years in particular has really seen that. If you don't see yourself represented, not in just games, movies, media, whatever, you don't think it's necessarily possible unless you have someone else actively telling you that. So having that representation is very much key, black, LGBTQIA, Asian, wherever, just so that they can see themselves in more games. And it, it makes for a better gaming industry because gaming at its fundamental is based off the imagination. Mm -hmm. So the wider the imagination, the more you can do, the more stories you can tell, the more worlds you can create. If you have a whole bunch of people in a room trying to solve a problem, but they've all had the same experience of life, they have a similar outlook, that's not innovative. What would be your top advice for anyone who wants to get into it? If you're... Be nice. <laughs> if you're comfortable with uh, eating beans on toast for the rest of your life, go for it. That's my advice. Get some knowledge about different business models, different kinds of games, know what you like. Some of the best people I've worked with have been into games from a very young age, but more importantly than loving games, they love the craft behind it. Mm. They can talk to you about mechanics they like. It's not just that I want to make video games, it's really understanding everything that goes into it, and that, that really gives you a kind of advantage when you come in. Just make stuff, get a portfolio. I just started a free WordPress blog and I just set myself a deadline every week and I was like, every week I'm gonna, I'm gonna write something. One thing I think is really good at the moment is the accessibility of the tools. So things like Unreal Engine, where you can pick it up and just start making a game. I can use the Blueprint system to create exactly what's in my head, or at least a good version of it, that can communicate to other people what the game is. Look at people who are doing it, look at people who are doing it similar to you and collaborate with them. Networking is really important. So going along to London Games Festival, going along to EGX. I came to this very loading bar when I was you know, still in university and I wanted to meet like-minded people. I would personally go to events. Um, face to face oh, okay. time is always best um, because you get a feel if you're gonna actually gel well. You might see a, a title on LinkedIn. That doesn't mean you're gonna work well with that person and they're yeah, gonna yeah. offer the right guidance. And support organizations that you feel will support you. It's all about collaboration. It's a big old industry and more and more people wanna work in it. There's lots of people vying for lots of jobs and you wanna make mm -hmm. sure that you can prove that you've got something about you. You'll start on indie games. You'll start in game jams. You'll start doing it in your spare time and you're going to do that for a lot longer than you thought you were going to. It pays to be a little bit cheeky sometimes, not in an annoying way, but mm. like just make sure people remember you. If you're very lucky, you might get noticed and things move upwards from there. It is a fantastically welcoming industry that wants really, really, really good people with personality, with curiosity and with a love of games. It truly is a great job to work in. Like, if you can write about the things that you really, really love, like, you just have to consider yourself fortunate, <laughs> however you end up doing it, in whatever context you end up doing it. When you can just do the thing you love and other people actually are glad that you did it, there's nothing compares to that. Uh, something like 60% of children now will be in jobs that aren't yet invented. And I believe that the games industry is the absolute synthesis of those future skill sets that we do need for a successful creative uh, culture and economy uh, over the next 50 years.